Hello and welcome to tutorial 110 in this series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you've not been to our website, it's markplex.com and there you will find a lot of tutorials and programs and also our membership site, Goldpass. So what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is drawing a line, a vertical line on the chart, which is representative of the number of times that price has crossed over the midpoint of a bar. So if you can imagine these bars, for example, this bar here, and uh, you can imagine the midpoint, well, during the bar, the price can have gone up and down and up and down and up and down a number of times crossing that point. And that is what we're plotting here. Now, actually, this program that I have applied to the chart here is a slightly more advanced program that's going to be available for download together with the program that we're going to create in this tutorial. And what it does is plot the number of times the price crosses over that midpoint, also the number of times it crosses over the open close divided by two. And you can see that that's distinguished by different colors and thicknesses, which are also available to be set in the downloadable program. But let's just focus for the moment on the program we're going to develop in this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is just go here and just turn off the program, the more advanced program. And uh, let's go to the development area and uh, start working on the tutorial program. So what we've done, what I've done here is I've left the namespaces. We need to use collections because we're going to be using a vector and we need to use uh, drawing and drawing objects because we're going to be using the trade station drawing objects. Uh, this is, needs to be set to intrabar order generation is equal to true because we're going to be using or we are using a strategy and we need to use the tick data to get um, accurate results of uh, what we're trying to achieve. So the variables I've left uh, declared here, I don't want to waste time typing those in again, but basically we need to declare the vector, price vector, which is going to be used to store the tick data for a particular bar. We need a variable to store the mid price, which is going to be when the, the bar ends, high plus low we divided by two, obviously. Um, we're going to have a counter, which is going to count the number of times price crosses over that midpoint. That's going to be mid price X. And then we're going to be having the maximum value of that since the program starts calculating. And we need this so that we can get uh, an idea of how how much, what percentage of the number of times the, uh, the price cross has occurred as compared to the maximum number of times it's occurred on previous bars. Got a counter. Then we're going to be using these vertical lines. We're going to be using trend lines and the uh, the two points that we're going to be using to define those trend lines, DT1, DT2. And then finally, we need to calculate the screen size. We do that by calculating get up info of the highest AI, highest display value map minus get app info lowest AI lowest display size. We also need the lowest value, which is we get by using get app info AI lowest display value again. Okay, so let's uh, jump into the program. And the first thing we need to do is instantiate the vector that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to do it once. Incidentally, the downloadable programs have commentary comments throughout. So hopefully that will help you understand them a little better. So price fact, I'm going to call it price fact. We've already called it that in the variables. Okay, like so. And Probably you don't necessarily need to do this, but if you're going to be any, doing any debugging and seeing how the program works, you might want to clear the print log. And I'm going to say end. I'm just going to press the little green arrow or press F3 just to make sure we've not made any mistakes. Now, this program does quite a lot of pro processing. So what I've done is said that we will only start doing calculations based on the chart we can see. So we can do that by saying if el date to date time of the date plus el date rather time to date time time is greater 
or equal to, then we're using get app info, i.e. left display time. Let's copy that from here and modify a little bit. So we need to change that to left display date time. So if that is true, in other words, if the bar that we're looking at at this moment is greater than the leftmost bar that we can see on the chart, then we're gonna start calculating. So we'll say then begin. So what we're gonna do for each tick, we're gonna to need to make some settings to the actual strategy later, but we're gonna go price effect dot insert zero and the close value. So we're gonna do that on each tick. And then at the end of the bar, in other words, if bar status one equals two, then begin. So this is the last tick of the bar. We can now do two things. We can count, uh, work out what the uh, mid price is. So we're gonna say mid price, we're gonna first of all reset the counter. So mid price X is equal to zero, like so. Then we're gonna calculate the mid price. That is equal to high plus low divided by two. And now, because it's the last tick of the bar, we can go through the vector that we've been developing and see how many crosses occur. So we're gonna use our counter. We're gonna say for counter equals zero to the counter of the vector price vect dot count. And we need to minus two because the vector starts storing in element zero. And also we're gonna be comparing, so we don't wanna include uh, the last element. So we're gonna do price vect count minus two, uh, begin. So we're gonna say if price effect counter as type double is greater or equal to mid price and price effect counter plus one as type double is less than mid price. Okay, so actually that should be a square bracket there. So we're saying if the, uh, the price, the last tick was greater than mid price, and the price tick before that was below the mid price, then we've got a, a cross, and we can also do it the other way around. So what I'm gonna do, just to save a little bit of time, is just copy this and then just change the, uh, change the greater than. So in this particular case, we're gonna say or it's gonna be less than or equal to and greater than. So if that is true, what we're gonna do, increment mid price X, mid price X, which stores the uh, number of cross variables, plus equals one. Just gonna increment that variable by one. And having done that, we need to end. Now, as I mentioned, because this is not a, a variable which is naturally limited, in other words, it could get as high or as low as it wants to, we need to have some way of delimiting it on the, uh, the chart. So we're gonna do that is by doing it by the highest number of times it occurred previously. So we're gonna say if mid price X is greater than mid price X count, or the highest mid price X count. So if mid price X is higher than highest mid price X, then highest mid price X equals mid price X. So that's just assigning it, whatever the highest value has been so far is gonna be stored in highest mid price X. Having done that, having done our calculation, we can now clear the price vector because we're gonna to need to use the next bar. So we're gonna say price effect. Having calculated the number, we can now do our drawing objects. So we're gonna do, create a couple of date time points. DT1 is equal to DT point dot create. And uh, we know what the uh, the bar date time is. It's the bar date time of the current bar, like so. And we want to go from zero and DT point again create. And we're going to again be using bar date time zero. I'm just going to put that in. But this time we're gonna be using a calculation which is equal to mid price X divided by, let me just copy that, divided by highest mid price X 
times by 0.25 is just a factor so it doesn't fill the whole chart and uh, again in the more advanced program I've made that a variable or rather an input times by the screen size which we already calculated in the variable setup plus the lowest value on the screen which again we already calculated when we set up our variables okay so that's set up the two data points we now need to create a trend line using those so our trend line we know is called tl so we're going to call trend line dot create and we simply put in the dt2 and the dt1 like so that's trend created the trend line but what we have to do not forget or don't forget to add that to the chart so we're going to say drawing objects add and the name of the drawing object that we're adding then we just need to end our begin statements like so and see if we've made any errors okay what have we done strategy not verified okay so I put in a incorrect bracket there we need a square bracket again I've done the same there because I copied it okay we've got a, a round bracket there but we don't have one at the beginning I'm just gonna add one there and add one here as well I think we need missed out a space okay looks good so I've already got this applied to the chart so let's go and have a look at the chart okay so there we go so the idea you might be asking what's the point of this well the, the uh, couple of additional points here one th the reason I thought it might be something useful is that potentially when price was about to make a big move maybe perhaps the market was going to be a little bit uncertain about which direction it was going so you could say or you could see that you get a little bit of a uh, higher number of uh, movements of course you're going to get more on a doji type bar anyway but uh, a higher number when we're about to change direction the other thing to note is that uh, I used the strategy and I used tick data here but here, there are other ways of doing this of course and uh, a price series provider might be one of those ways and that's something that I might do in a future tutorial and the other thing to mention is that once you've created this program you need to go into format strategies and for the tutorial program whichever whatever you call it click on properties for all and make sure you've got use look inside bar back testing and then for the best results change that to one tick okay that is all uh, as I mentioned uh, the more advanced version is going to be available in the download as is the simpler version but with um, a number of comments which should make it a little more understandable so uh, if you'd like to do the download then you're very welcome to and it's available at markplex.com thank you for your time